70 amateur soccer players headed to Indianapolis in the spring for a chance at the dream of playing professional soccer. 46 players advanced to a three-month summer camp, 22 players earned the selection to a two-day minicamp. Someone will join Indy 11 in preseason for the opportunity to earn a pro contract. None of these players are on the radar of pro soccer. For many, it's their last chance to reach their dream. For some, it's their only chance. You get one chance, you gotta make it count. You, you can't rely on the next time because you know maybe it'll it'll be your last. And that's kind of the motto I live by. Is you, just, you gotta give it your all at every moment. Now that I'm I'm here, I have to to make a statement. You know, I'll be everybody's pipe dream. That's fine. Look at my play on the field. It's not gonna be easy. It's not gonna be given. It's not gonna be handed. And you got guys that on your own team are gonna try and take your position because they that's how they make their living. That's the pros. Get, get ready for it. If you're not ready for it, then, then you don't need to be on this field. Indy 11 has been, uh, has been a soccer team playing professionally in Indianapolis uh, since 2014. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you Indy 11. First time the Indy 11 to take to the field here at Michael A. Carroll Track and Soccer Stadium on the campus of IUPUI. This team had over 7,000 season ticket holders before it ever played its first match. Vukovic, Braun, Braun, Lacroix, Lacroix, the cross. Yes! Oh, Are you kidding me? That's the Are board. you kidding me? Zion with his third and eight. The Indy 11 gets to 18 points. Fourth win of the spring campaign. The obvious next step for the Indy 11 for many years has always been 11 part. And now we have the ground picked out. Now we've had the groundbreaking. Now there is kind of this future target of, of April of 2025. Indy's next big thing, well, the future home of the Indy 11 soccer team to include a 20,000 seat stadium along the White River, at least five 10 to 20 story buildings for residential, hotel, retail development, and a 4,000 seat entertainment venue as well. Whether you're a soccer fan or not, you can get invested in this story because this is somebody grasping at their dream and for some of them a last chance to try to play professional soccer at some level. And it's really unique and cool to make this dream a potential reality for some of these players. You are going undrafted. That doesn't mean you can't play. That doesn't mean you can't be a professional player. That doesn't mean that you can't have a pro career. That means that you're off the radar of the MLS. That could be because you had to get a job to support your family. It could be that there was an injury at a critical point and you didn't get seen. That could be that you chose a school that fits you on a whole lot of levels, but was off the radar of the MLS. This is not a normal open tryout. Our normal tryouts have 200 guys. This was capped at 60. We want to advance 20 to 40 of you into phase two. And the reason we're doing this tryout is because that player that gets overlooked that player that's the underdog, the player that thinks this is my last chance or thinks this is my only chance, that player fights harder. That player doesn't quit. That player doesn't look for shortcuts. That player is a warrior. That's the player that we want in our locker room. And it's time for you to take a massive step towards your dream of being a professional soccer player. In this program, you are in the Indy 11 system. You are representing us. We expect you to carry yourself like a pro. Yeah. Want to win this 30 minutes, right? Compete everything you do. Let's get let's get it done. Yes, sir. All right, play with each other. Talk to each other. Let's get it done. Let's go. Come on, come on. One, two, three. Play to your strengths. Try to minimize your weaknesses, but get out there, enjoy yourself. This chance to be seen. All right, yes, guys, ready? Let's do it. Team A, baby, let's go. go. One, two, three. Indy 11. Easy lap, yep. Go to it, go to it, go to it, go to it. One heart, one heart, get there. I enjoyed coming out here and just getting a chance to, to play with people. You know, it's always a beauty. The beauty of the sport, you can come and just everyone loves the game. It's the same game wherever you are in the world. It's been a dream since I've been a little, little child in Ethiopia, so I just hope to someday be able to achieve that dream. 
felt like an awesome opportunity for me to not only showcase my skills, but to go up against some really good players and compete for something that I really want to achieve for, which is a pro contract. There's a lot of good players trying out for this program, so I'm really excited to compete with them. And I think that it's just going to improve my skill further and it's just going to make me a better player. As I you know, communicated with my teammates more and I felt more confident throughout the game, I just felt like I played better and I felt like I was an important factor for my team. Pull him with you, Milo, pull him with you! Collect it, collect it! That's the space we want to live in, coming out of the back. And then we shift that diamond over to take away their outside midfielder on the strong side, yes? Yeah. Got it? Yeah? So we got about minute, minute and a half. Got it? Okay. Yes? Good match. Oh, this is cold. This is balmy for us Midwesterners. You should see my jacket. <laughs> I hear you. I hear you. As part of the initial tryout, the players went through a series of technical assessments with the team from Sogility. My son, Dalton Tainer, is trying out. He was an outstanding player at Bluffton University. I've coached him since he was four. I mean, it's been his dream to play at a higher level outside of college. And for this opportunity here, it means the world to him. My son, Jack Kirby, is going to be an incoming junior at DePauw University. He would enjoy playing with Indy 11, and um, his goal is to play professional soccer someday. My name's Lene Phillock, and my son, Dylan Phillock. He started playing soccer at kindergarten age. We don't know how many more opportunities he'll have um, to do something like this. It's, it's been a dream of his, obviously, I think like most little boys, to play pro soccer. He's the best player I've ever played with personally, so getting to see him really get a, a real shot at a career here and Indy 11 putting this on has been awesome. He's put in so much work, been more committed than I've ever seen him, and he's a really committed guy, so um, this means everything to him, getting a chance in front of these coaches. And I've always thought he was able to play at some sort of capacity professionally, and I think this is his best shot to do it. And He's, I think he's about to turn 25, so it's kind of make it or break it now. So I think he's uh, he's super committed to this opportunity. I'm here for my little brother, Jack Hatungimana, 24. Ever since he was like five, seven, he's been like into different clubs, but he's been like really passionate about playing soccer. He's, um, he loves the game. Like he's the type who at home, he practices every day. He texts, like he wakes up at 6 a.m. and practice and just train himself so that he can be better. And he's done this since he was five. So like, this is very personal. It's something that he liked, especially coming from like a refugee house, you know, no money, nothing. Um, like he needed a lot of help, but he definitely, this is personal and this is perfect. So for him to be here, this is great. It can't always be a negative pass for possession. You're gonna have to turn and be dangerous. We were dangerous three times that entire 30 minutes. You have to try to be dangerous at times. Try and find ways to break behind the back line. How we feel? Oh, I'm feeling good, man. I'm ready for that. I'm, I'm ready for that starting spot. <laughs> uh, came out here and did what I can do. Score goals. So. I bagged two of them. I wish I had more, though. Feeling good. Amazing, feeling good. man. That was a great opportunity. Not to get out here. The weather got really good. So, it was great awesome. energy. It was great awesome. energy. Dude. Ready for dinner. <laughs> That's for sure. I like the competition. The level is great. Uh, Helping work harder more. So yeah. I think there's a couple of pretty impressive players out here. Good level. A lot of talent. So the cream is going to rise to the top. Just seeing guys from from all over, you know, chase a dream. You know, uh, trying trying to get after it and and uh, execute and, and make that next step towards professional soccer. Enjoy every moment that you are here whether you're on the field or doing other activities um, throughout this whole process that you're going through. It's a very, it's a very special opportunity that you have. Um, we're obviously looking for good players. We also value good people. So how you behave, your characteristics on the field are important, but also your characteristics off the field. How hard do you work away from here? Taking care of your body, whether you're in school or at work, making sure that everything you do 
is done with excellence um, and the best you can do with full effort every single moment. We're gonna go through the notes that the coaches have. We're gonna go through the VO on each one of you and an invitation is gonna come out within the next 48 to 72 hours to you. When you come back in that next round, your home and away jersey, that is a QR code that is gonna be specific to you. You will control the video. It's off your phone. You say, hey, I'm so-and-so. This is where I'm from. This is what I'm all about. And that's your video. So in the bio, anytime somebody scans that QR code on your jersey, it's your bio. It takes it directly to you. 40 players have made it to the summer portion of the program. Each week, those 40 players will participate in a 70-minute game. Following those games, fans, players, coaches, and Indy 11 staff will be able to vote for who they feel performed the best. At the end of the summer, the top players will be invited to a two-day camp hosted by Indy 11 head coach Mark Lowry. Take two equal players talent-wise. Let's say we're, we're in July and there's two guys that we're trying to decide who advances into that next group in December. And you've got one guy that follows us on every social media platform, subscribes to the YouTube channel, likes and shares, comes and does a bunch of appearances. And you got another guy that comes out and plays and then goes home. You got one guy that comes and supports the first team and sits in the stands. You got another guy that leaves and goes home. All things being equal talent wise, who's the guy that's going to get selected to move on? The guy that's all in. Okay, so make sure that you're all in. In Undrafted, there are players from Africa, Europe, Canada, the Middle East, Central America, and the U.S. It's amazing to see how soccer can bring all these players and cultures together. Sometimes, not being able to speak each other's language is overcome by the love of the game. I'm from Western Michigan University, so that's where I was uh, studying uh, chemical engineering. In my spare time, I was also uh, playing soccer. You know, I played for the WMU uh, club team. You know, we have a soccer ball. You know, it doesn't matter what situation economically you're in. You know, you just show up and then you share a laugh. You know, you play together and then you have fun. There's so many different profiles of players. That's why that's why this game is so beautiful. But uh, you've got the athleticism. You've got you've got skill base. You've got tactical base. You've got leadership. We've allowed them to uh, lead warm-ups. We've seen kind of who's leaders, who's who's followers. Uh, we've selected two different groups based off position, position profiles we've had. Uh, now we're kind of watching them lead uh, and orchestrate. So they're already beginning uh, the evaluation process before even stepping on the field. These players are in various stages of life, with some having families, some still in college, and even a player in his 40s. In Poland, everybody played soccer at that time. That, that was the sport. So I pretty much started playing when I was two years old. When I came to the U.S., I pretty much stopped playing all sports and I started dancing. So the last 25 years, I was a ballroom dancer. My mom always wanted me to learn how to dance. My personality is when I do something, I don't just do it. Like I need to compete. Through coaching and private lessons, uh, I learned that repetition and focusing on fundamentals is what gets you better. So then when I picked up soccer ball, I was like, I'm going to go and practice on my own. I'm going to go and practice two to three hours every day, do drills, cones, shooting, and structure my own practice. And then somehow I went on the Indy 11 website. And I saw this undrafted thing, and I'm thinking to myself, the worst thing that can do, it can happen, is they're going to throw me away once they find out my age, or I'm just not going to make it, right? But then I was like, you know what? What the hell? Like, let's see what happens. And I'm here, let's see what happens. Simple, just gonna start, hey, just a simple 4-4-2, right? Simple flat 4-4-2. Um, we're just gonna start with 39 and 27 up top, 22, 20, so 22 on the left wing, 20 and 12 in the center mid, 24 on the right wing. So I played when I was younger, uh, till like seventh grade, and then I stopped for a really long time. I played basketball. Uh, I played basketball like more professionally than soccer. Like I walked on at the University of Cincinnati basketball team and everything, and then I picked soccer back up during the pandemic. Recently, I've been like making TikToks. I'll go out on like the pitch and stuff, and just you know, do make cool videos. Of just like kicking around, or just doing a small drill here and there. Uh, I feel like everyone's doing those nowadays. So. <laughs> Energy's pretty low out there. I know it's a big field, but you guys should be used to that. So we got up that intensity up a little bit. The spaces are way too big. Being honest, there's huge channels to play through, right? But you guys aren't even playing through the channels. 
I say, more intensity, more compact. Early on, it was difficult because the players didn't know each other's names and they were still learning each other's playing styles. We're like, let's start calling each other's names even if we're just gonna win the ball, let's say our name, just so we can start getting used to each other. But, you know, um, kind of something that I'm used to. I've played on a lot of teams before where you don't really know anyone, so I'm kind of used to that, and I'm sure all these guys are too, so. What do you guys think of the game so far? If anything, we should just really calm the nerves, because it feels like we're rushing a lot of stuff. Yep, yep. I, the end of each moment that you guys played, the last five, six minutes, you guys started to get more comfortable and started to move the ball and started to make more runs. Okay, at the beginning, it looks stagnant, it looks stagnant. So don't be afraid of, uh, of taking chances. Okay, we got to have more runners uh, off the ball. I don't think we've created enough chances in, in that duration of time. Um, the lines, what we're looking for, when we do go forward, we're looking at that back line and the midfielders. Are you keeping the lines tight? Yeah. Are you staying all the way up and getting on those backs? Okay, so control line, 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 be a bit more compact. That way when you win the ball, you'll have, you'll have uh, a quick options and you can expand quickly. Okay, so let's take more chances. Let's not, let's not finish this day with uh, a 0-0 zero, zero score. Yeah. Let's let's get done, boys! Let's go, let's go. Bring it in. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Let's get it done, boys. Navy on three! One, One two, two, three! Navy! Over the summer, the players participated in 10 games within the undrafted program. 10 opportunities for them to show themselves. Through these 10 opportunities, the coaches have the chance to see their ability, to learn their personalities, and understand a bit of each player's backstory. It's a very unique way of trying out for a team. This deep dive into these players allows for a more knowledgeable view of how each player would fit within the first team dynamics. I like to keep the aggressiveness high. Um, I think it sends a message pretty early on in the game to the other team of trying not to try anything silly because I'm going to come in and I'm going to take care of it. I think the communication is really high. Um, we're moving the ball all right. I think it could be a little quicker, but just being able to identify the runs that their offensive strikers are making and being able to identify those early so we can get organized in the back line. They need to be more confident to take more chances. I think they're a little bit uh, uh, complacent at the moment, a little bit stagnant. So there needs to be more more runs in the box, more balls behind, and uh, see if guys can be a little bit more creative and take chances. First goal of the season, how'd you do it walking to that side? Um, I knew that he was behind, and I just went fast as I can, and pass the ball, get it back, and score. I'm just out here giving all my best, you know, from Africa. Um, I walk out every day, run, lift, and do ball work because I want to go pro, and that's a dream. So I will do anything to get there. I actually just finished my fifth year at Bluffton University. Okay, very cool. What are your strengths as a soccer player? Uh, speed, ball work, and finishing. How, yeah, how difficult is it to make connections with these guys when you don't know the first name basis yet? Uh, I mean, at first it's hard just because I haven't played with really any of these guys besides the last tryout, but you get about 10 minutes into the game and then you get a feel for how everybody plays and then you're able to make those connections really. As we get used to it, we've got a lot of different types of footballers out here, uh, which is good. Uh, that's what's amazing about this sport is the variety of players that we have. Um, you know, we're, we're and, and that's what creates a team. So every time when we recruit for our first team, we look at the profiles, we look at players, and you're always wanting something different. There's always something you don't have. Uh, and you guys have a lot of different uh, types of profiles here. So uh, well played overall on first day. Uh, for sure, more better players than I would have expected. We want you staying in your position uh, that you're in to show that you're tactically astute. Okay, but within that, can you gain endurance and, and, and uh, energy capacities before next time to make sure you can come out and do your best? We kind of just got more comfortable as the day went on. I know like we'd met before at the first tryout, but we we're still kind of getting names, getting used to each other. Mm -hmm. And uh, we had a big talk at halftime, you know, first half we were kind of passive and the coaches really wanted us to come there, come out there, talk to each other, trust each other. And uh, we put that into play in the second half. I think you have to find the perfect balance between teamwork and also knowing like when to go for it. Because at the end of the day, if I don't do what I do, me, let's say we don't win, you know what I'm saying? And then I'm a striker. So the coach is like, you gotta have something else, you know, for us to win. So it's like, it's not so much being selfish. It's about doing what you have to do for the team to win. You know, if I play well, the rest of the team plays well. If I play bad, maybe the rest of the team still plays better. But it's like, 
maybe I could do something better to like help the team overall. So. Obviously, it's hard when you come into the first game. You don't really know a lot of the players, so uh, communicating is tough. But as I went through the game, it was I found it easier to communicate with my team and just to put my teammates in the best positions and uh, just make the saves I needed to make and help our team get the win. <laughs> Coming up on Undrafted. Everybody's dream is to come to United States of America. My dream was to come here, achieve, um, to be a soccer player and get education. But leaving my brothers back home and come here, it was like, it was sad. I was in the airport, I saw my mom crying. Was I was happy at the same time as I was sad at the same time, so it's, it was really difficult for me at that moment. <laughs> 